time to get up. up north. Capricorn Resort, Yapoon. Capricorn Resort. Once a major tourism destination and employer for the town of Yapoon, the Capricorn Resort lies eerily abandoned and left to ruin. At one time this was one of Australia's most luxurious resorts, operated by Ridges until 2011 and then the McCure brand until 2015 when they literally walked away. Hampered by cyclones and the global financial crisis, little money was spent during these years. Maintenance was poor and the buildings were badly in need of an upgrade. Bad reviews on social media, creating a drop in tourist numbers, meant that the resort was becoming unprofitable and therefore shut down, leaving what we see today, the remnants of what was, once, something great. The good news, declared a coordinated project between the Queensland Government and the Iwasaki family who have owned the 9,000 hectares here for some three generations. The Yapoon Capricorn Resort is said to be rebuilt. The emphasis of the project is to be harmony with the environment. 65% of the land is to be declared a nature reserve, 20% will be a pure Wagyu beef tourist farm and the remaining 15% is to be the new, environmentally friendly eco-resort. Once again, putting Yapoon on the international tourist map. Breakfast. I think the 
sea fog. Might have caught up with me a little bit. <laughs> it's a bit weird up in front. This comes from nowhere. No wonder it used to annoy the shipping. Here goes nothing. Piece of cake. Nippoon. This looks pretty promising. Go in here and see how that pans out. Very nice. Lua living. I've ordered myself eggs benedict. I'm gonna have a real breakfast this morning. Shout myself. A couple of bits of toast is all I've been having every morning. Just to try and be reasonably healthy. But since so, this is just down the road, I'm gonna make the most of it. I think the worst place is to be on a Monday morning. done. Time for a walk. How beautiful is this? Walking beside the water. Have a look at these. They even cater for everybody. We've got a water park. Kids are going to love this. To the left, beautiful beach. Beautiful part of the world. Stunning as this. Near perfect weather. Bay Marina. Have a look at this thing. I wonder if he's going to do what I think he's going to do. Yep, sure is. How easy is that? And over there my ride for tomorrow for my three days on Great Keppel Island. So looking forward to that. Look at that for a 
coastline. This is the Great Ocean Road, Central Queensland. Just about to cross over the causeway, over Causeway Lake. That makes sense. Causeway Lake. Tide's still out. <laughs> Water on one side, not much on the other. Mimi Park. This way. Kinka Creek. Mimi Park. Five kilometres. Yay! Anzac Court, and in fact this whole precinct, commemorates the centenary of those who served in World War I and took almost five years to complete. This pictorial screen sculpture is an interpretive work based on a photograph taken on the Western Front on the 5th of October 1917. 16 Australian troops were trudging along wooden duck boards to relieve comrades at the front line when James Francis Hurley captured the scene. This painting, called The Spirit, depicts the 10th Battalion scaling the banks of Anzac Cove just 30 minutes after the initial landing in 1915. The artwork has been installed so the viewer can align the artworks horizon with Keppel Bay's horizon. Using your imagination, the Keppel Islands could represent warships. The outbreak of war in 1914 saw many Australians play their part in the defence of the country. Here in central Queensland was no different. Young men and women signed up and boarded the crowded ships, the aim being to halt the advance of the enemy in Europe and in particular, the Middle East. Known as the mother of the Queenslanders, Annie Wheeler was appointed an OBE in 1920 for her pivotal role in keeping soldiers in contact with their families back home during World War I. Soldiers like Private Thwaite, who at 21 enlisted on the 30th of November 1915 and did not return to Australia until the war ended in 1919. Thomas Swate was one of the fortunate ones, as many did not return home. He lived out his life in Emu Park until his death on the 11th of April, 1980. Remembering Together. This Anzac precinct was developed in stages since 2014. It involved all levels of government, local, state and federal in partnership with the RSL EMU Park sub-branch and the generous contributions of many local businesses and individuals. The Memorial Boardwalk itself is an emotional experience 
with the beauty of Keppel Bay on one side and on the other a reflective timeline of the many major battles that Australians fought in World War I. On the morning of 21st of April 1918, during a wild aerial dogfight above Moreland Court Ridge in France, Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron, was brought down. A British squadron of Sopworth Camel fighters laid claim. A Canadian pilot, Captain Arthur Brown, who was flying with the British, was behind and above the Baron and was awarded the feat. Evidence, however, points to an Australian gunner the plane crashed in Australian lines in the Amiens sector. A medical examination showed the angle of the bullet in the chest of the German pilot was from below, not above or behind. Eyewitnesses including Private William B. Brown, machine gun calls from Dringa in central Queensland, reported that the enemy pilot was shot by the Australian gunners in the trenches on the ridge. The singing ship to honour Captain James Cook, RN, 1728 to 1779. Explorer, navigator, cartographer, who discovered and named Cabell Bay, 26th to the 28th of May, 1770.